Okay, um, this is part three of Applications to Ampere's Law. Um, I just wanted to say about that last one, we were talking about the that the magnetic field outside of a coaxial cylinder is equal to zero. And so that's nice that you don't have to worry about the magnetic field um, maybe interfering with other parts of other circuits. And so um, I just wanted to convince you that if that if you just put two wires next to one another they don't cancel so here's one wire here's another wire and even though you know the current could be going this way here and this way here you might think that out here these two currents would cancel each other but um, they won't because um, if you think about it <coughs> um, the field from this guy right here is going into the page so I'm putting a little X from there. Actually, I'm going to put a big strong X from there because it's really close. Whereas the current from this guy is up. And so that's, but that's going to be a weaker field. And so those don't cancel because this, this current is just further away. Um, I've drawn this so it looks like it's twice as far away. And so let's just say it is. Let's say that the distance between these two are D. And then this is another D out all the way out to there. Well, the field from this guy is going to be mu naught I over 2 pi D. Whereas the field from the further wire is going to be mu naught I all over 2 pi. If they have the same currents, I'm assuming they have the same currents. Uh, 2 pi times all over, times... 2d so it's half this is half the field and so you're not going to they're not going to cancel out whereas if they're along the same axis then they do cancel out okay so that's why we use coaxial cables okay um, for this next pro problem um, we're going to now assume that the the current is not uniformly distributed throughout now we have a wire like such, maybe capital R. And let's say that the current density um, J is equal to some um, constant, um, maybe um, beta. Uh, I don't want to use beta. It looks like a B for magnetic field. How about K, just some constant K times R. So the further out you go, all the way out to the here, the further out you go, the more the current density is. So the, the current, let's see, at r equals zero, there is no current going through there. And then as you go out, this current gets much stronger. The current is much stronger out here. But it gets weaker as you go in. Okay, so <clears throat> you get the problem. And now what I want to know is, um, what will be the field when you're a distance r away? What will be the magnetic field? And let's say the current is coming out at us. So if it's coming out at us, curl your fingers. And um, so I know the B is this way. It's going to be, you know, diagonally that way. But I'd like to know what the, what the, the strength of it is. Okay. So I'm going to draw an Amperian loop. Maybe I'm going to use uh, green for the Amperian loop. There's my Amperian loop. Now the only current that matters is the current that's through the Amperian loop or the Amperian membrane. So that would be this stuff. Okay, but I have a problem because I can't just say um, that that current is going to be J times this area. If I do, if I just say it's Kr times pi r squared, then the math thinks that the that it's just going to use the current density that's right there at, at capital R, where it's it's really not all it it it's much less. It will you'll you'll be overestimating how much current is going through there. So the question is, how do you how do you handle that? Well, what you do is you're going to find the current through just a ring of charge a, a ring here. I'll make that really a thick ring, but it's really thin here. 
So this is going to be, um, let's call this R. Uh, this one, the one that we want to know how far out it is, that R, let's call that R naught. Because um, I don't want you to confuse that with this other R. So that's an R naught. I don't know if you can see that. But, and this is going to be R. And um, let me find how much current is through this ring, that shaded ring. And then I'm going to sum that up with an integral. And that will, that, that will be what um, I'll use for the current through the membrane. Okay, so uh, the current that goes through this little ring is a small current. So the current through the ring, put it in red because I'm talking about the red part. That's, that's going to be equal to um, the J there, whatever the J is there, times that little area. In other words, J is D-I-D-A. Okay. Well, um, that current then through that ring, D-I, is equal to J, which is K-R, times the DA. Now the DA is, if I cut this and roll it out, we have, um, this is a thickness DR. It's very thin. This ring is very thin. And it's got a length of 2 pi R. And so DA is really 2 pi R times DR. Okay, now I don't really want to know just how much current's through here. I want it for the entire Empyrean membrane. And so to get the entire Empyrean membrane, I'm going to sum up all the currents through each of those rings from zero. I'll tell it to start at zero. And don't stop summing till you get to R naught. Okay, let's do the math then. That means that the current through the Empyrean loop is going to be, I can pull out some constants. I got a 2 pi and a k. So I got 2 pi k. <clears throat> and this is r squared dr from 0 to r naught. And so uh, when I do that integral, I'm going to get that it's 2 pi k. And this is going to be um, r cubed over 3. And when I put in 0 and r naught, I'm just going to get that. So that's the i through the Empyrean loop right there. Okay, now I'm out of space. But the rest is pretty basic because I'm going to now put that in for my, for my equation. So um, mu naught times i is equal to the closed loop integral of b dot dl. Well, um, b and dl are going to be in the same direction, so I can get rid of the dot product. Because they're in the same direction. Oops, got rid of the dot product, get rid of the vectors. I can pull the b out because why would b be any stronger here than here than here? It's all the same on there. And so I'm left with um, b. And when I add up all the dl's, I'm going to get 2 pi r. Okay, I can get rid of a pi, and um, I can get rid of a 2, and I can get rid of an r. This is really r naught, so I can get rid of it. That gets squared. And so it's b is equal to mu naught k r naught squared over 3. So that's what the b is in there. So when I'm in there... If I were to graph that, at least all the way out to capital R, it looks like this, just a constant, it looks like it goes up like this. Outside, it's going to do something different.
Thanks. Bye.